Howler. Do you know what? Let's okay, go. So, okay, good. Do, do. Listen. Poets Howler. Let's go. No, that. you better talk at this. You, you, I need your voice. This is mad. So we go over to the half class. HC, sorry. Right. All right, so we're going to start with John, Ter- John Terry and flipping Rio Ferdinand since we're here. Straight to my twit twit. And let me know when this happened because I don't know nothing about this. I just see people telling me to talk about it. I mean, it's a stink card. It happened late in the night and these men are just like arguing. I this morning. I wrapped it in this morning. So. so, there's a video, I believe. I could be, I could be wrong, actually. But basically, Rio Ferdinand's on like top five or whatever he's done his top defenders and John Terry's in there but John Terry doesn't seem to be happy with the position that he holds within it the number five I think it might have been five yeah so he started tweeting and posting his accolades in which Rio says this the moment one has to start pushing their own records and stats it's really time to start addressing the fragile ego you're lucky I even put you in top five after the racism case with my brother so be thankful you made it his response is, a fragile ego is putting yourself at number one, Rio. Thanks for putting me in your top five. A cup and a thumbs up. Here what I'm saying, you little cheeky bastard. I don't admit, I don't doubt for one second, if you saw me in a real life, it might get tense for me. But here what? I stand up what I say. Mm. John Terry, you are an absolute arsehole. Prick. You was racially abusive to Anton Ferdinand live on TV to the point where Anton didn't even hear it. When he went back upstairs, mm. everyone said to him, did you hear what my man said to you? Right. Let me show you how bad it got. When you went to court, kick it out of football, kick it out of racism, whatever. You, they didn't even go in court to back Rio or Anton. They stayed out of the equation because they were afraid of the England captain. And do you know who did go and back the England captain? Ashley Cole. Yeah. Cheryl Cole's missus at the time. Because he couldn't have been the hubby. I just think this whole situation is a fucking mess. John Terry, I don't care how many pictures you take with black people. I don't care how many comments you're in under black people's photos. You are a wanker. You're not res- You're not respected around here. Facts. You're not wanted around here. I know stories that I won't even say about what you've done. Bruv, you're an absolute prick, bruv. You know what the dumbest thing You're an absolute thing prick, bruv. You know what the worst thing about that back and forth is, yeah? So Rio obviously done that paragraph about um, you're lucky I put in the top five. Is? Racism, whatever, whatever, yeah? And then John Terry responded, but he responded to the part where Rio said he's got a fragile ego. Oh, he never no, responded no. to the racism thing. My thing is this, that like, you've been accused of two things. Right. Like, having a fragile ego and being racist. Right. Oh, but the only one you respond to the is the ego. part having a fragile ego. Right. So you know what? So what's well, going on? Right then. So in here, it might... So, okay, now that you've said that, do you know how I'm taking that? Hmm. He's standing on it. Exactly. What do you mean? He came out and said that I'm, he bust case. Listen. <laughs> he's first of all... No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, yeah... The bus case is whatever is busting case on whatever, fair, yeah? But the fact that he didn't even respond exactly. to that, to me he's is, accepting his he's accepting that. I'm, I'm saying standing to you, on that he one. did respond to that. He said he bust case. What do you mean? Exactly. The guy went to court 365 days later. It took everyone in England and the FA, the people that we're all meant to respect, one year to figure out what someone said when everyone saw it. That's a fucking howler in itself. And in, at the end of it, he didn't even really get punished, bro. So no, that's no. his whole thing. He didn't really get punished. But what I'm saying is he defended himself from being racist, right? Exactly. Yeah. In that moment, right? So he's de- he's defending himself. Yeah. Then he busts his case, mm-hmm. yeah? I mean, so I'm this cool. is now I didn't I wasn't being racist or whatever. Yeah? yeah. That is his thing. But in that moment, he's defending himself from that. In this one, he's not he's defending himself. He did it. He's just accepted it. When a man said, yo, yeah. ego All and right. thing, yeah, you're right. he you're just right. didn't you're say right. that part. It's almost as if he's saying, yeah, but anyway. He's even like a drill rapper, bro. He's like a drill rapper, bro. Yeah, his thing is... What like yeah the e- yeah the racist thing come but you're gonna tell me that I got a fragile ego exactly what? the racist thing is bigger than the ego that's thing. what I'm saying but you mean like a drill rapper bro right you know a drill rapper the bus's case then they come out and rap about the thing they just bus case for it's like bro and Chelsea you're still getting the howler as well that's a stinker from you lot how the fuck did you allow John Terry to take Ashley Cole to court did yeah. you not think every black person was gonna go hey first of all he's half black and that was the time we played for Crystal Palace when he moved back to Arsenal I could see he was shifting over. So mm. put, for this whole thing Michael for Jackson me team. is an absolute stinker. John Terry, you've had a stinker. Ashley Cole, I don't know why you got roped in, but you've had a stinker as well. The FA had a stinker. Chelsea had a stinker Kick again. It stinker. Kick it out. Oh, I can smell Ew. it from here. You lot stink. And do you know all you lot have to do? All you all have to do, tell the truth. But you lot are wankers, so you won't. Do you see what Carton Cole said? What Carton Cole said? We went on a podcast, yeah, and he said, obviously he knows Terry separately, innit? Like they know each other, yeah. And he said that, when he seen it, he was like, right, what well, shots? He never knew Terry to be racist, innit? Mm. So he rang Terry and said, like, yo, what happened? And Terry basically admitted to him that he said it, but he just said, oh, I just had a moment of madness. Rare, tear, tear. And basically, Carl and Cole just said, like, fuck my man, bro, I can't fuck with you no more. Literally. He says John Terry can't fuck with you no more. No, he, I don't know if he said that to him, but that's what he said on the podcast. He yeah. Just said, like, I, like, I can't. 
You get, I can't deal with you no longer, bro. You get me? Well, yes, you know Carl, Carl, with your hairline, the new thing. There's not an amount of pictures you can take with young Philly in chunks that's going to eradicate it, is 100%. it? 100%. All, right. all right, yeah, mm. all right. Do you know how much comments he's under? All down to my brethren Farron, you know the guy that takes all the knives off him? Every minute John Terry's in his comments like, love the work, your backside about you love the work he's doing. Strong. After you made an NFT of a black man the other day, made it a monkey. Terry, to the day you yeah. die, I'm on you. Wapping, wapping. I'm always going to be on you, John what Terry. You always. Any of you dons. You what? My brother, he made a NFT for William. Strike me down if I'm lying. Guess what? I'm sitting down. And it was a monkey. I'm not saying someone else can't do it, but you see you, Mr. Jonathan Terry? You, you can't, can't do, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're two first oh, names. I've seen, that. I've seen that. I've do seen that. Do you know what I'm saying? I've seen that. That's why I, I wish that rumour about your mum having sex with everyone was true. I really do, <laughs> especially our black oh, man. Who, who was that? Who chopped? Who chopped? I know someone that chopped John Terry's mum anyway. And they were black. And we did it for all of the years. We've done it for Rosa Parks, so we can sit Bro, anywhere we want. Like, who was it? LeBron James? I, I, might, I might not someone that chopped his, his mum. That's who? why you're my brother. I might. We who? might. What, LeBron James? Please. Might be LeBron James from down the road. It might be LeBron and James. Yeah, it might just be James. It might just be James. Reese James, the right back at Chelsea now. Hopefully, I'm just telling you, John Terry, the only way this situation changes is if you tell the truth. That's it's it. Too, I feel like it's too late now, though. It's never too late to tell the truth, you know? It's never too late to tell the truth. Like, if he comes out and says it now, then what's the impact of that? It means that in 10 years' time, people will go, do you know what? At least he... And you'll get some space. Because I won't cut... If he apologises, I won't cast him out on him no more. But why is it taking 10 years to apologise? Not 10 years, but how long has it been? But why is it taking so long? Longer. He's not it's longer. Fam. He's, He's not going to apologise. about Emmett Till, she only admitted it on her deathbed. Yeah, she, she admitted it when she was about to die. That's Do you know why? Dead doll. You know about that, Po? Sorry, yeah. I know you're going to go. No, I can't. The um, woman, the Emmett Till thing. You know about that? I don't even know who Emmett Till is. All right. So, oh, my God. You do, definitely. So I, don't basically, know, I don't know who that is, though. So, <laughs> you, what year... <laughs> No, 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 this is deep um, still. What year so? is it? This was like in the, this was like in the fifties or something like that, yeah? Oh, no, basically 50s. what happened was, yeah. basically what happened was, yeah, she had said that this black boy had like um, whistled at her or some shit like that. 1955. Yeah. Oh my God, so the man I them, know this story. Like, the man then turned up at the yard, took the ute, he was a kid, took him out of, dragged him out of the house in front of his family in that year, obviously punched him up. Uh, 14 years old. He was 14 years old, bro, they castrated him. And did they burn him alive or some they shit like, or they hung him? him. Yeah, him yeah. Damn. And so, and I understand, yeah. See, like when they were doing stuff like that to black people, yeah, mm-hmm. that was not just about that person. It was to scare the living daylights of other black people to make them understand that if you do anything like this that with a white woman or whatever, this is what will happen to you. So that caused a big thing because he was fourteen years old or whatnot. The man then went to court, whatever. What do you think happened? Bus case, yeah. Anyway, the woman's damn near about to die. This is recently, maybe what, five years ago or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's damn near about to die on her deathbed, be- de- deathbed and then she turns around and says like, that actually just never happened. That's shit though. That's dead. Why are you, because bro, if you've done something wrong here, you've got to live with it. Well, yeah, you know, why, why are you admitting it when you know you're not living normal? You know why? No, I'm happy though. Do you know why? No, I'm happy she's just... staring at heaven's gate. Trust me. And she's thinking, no. you know what? If I now tell the truth, what? when it comes to Ras Clark Judgment Day, when when Jesus is standing there with well, the dreadlocks. Book, the book was written. What? Huh? Nah, her book's already written, man. Listen, when Jesus is standing there with dreadlocks and dark skin, going through everyone's whatever and <laughs> understands what's going on with your thing, you're thinking that on your deathbed, you can turn around and say, exactly. right, I told the truth. So when I get there, when I chat to my man, that it's going to be... She's going downstairs, man. Same Do you know what Same happened? Downstairs. I know she went to heaven. She wasn't on guest list. They checked her ID. Then the little boy came out and said, no, ah. she can't come. And there was an escalator right. and there was a lift. Yes. And inside there, the Bear. devil was oh, there. Bear lava. Lava. He said, Bear, Bear lava. Fire. Bear lava. He said, lava. Fire. He said, lava. Later. You know, it wasn't a lift. Come on. And John Terry, that's this? where you're going. You're going hell. I'd love for a cartoon to be drawn of that. I would love John Terry to go hell. Anyway, sorry. Wow. John Terry, you are the English Hitler. All right. Wow. So the next one. Listen to this new law made in the Supreme Court in the United States. I need to take it off my headphones, a stinker. Look at this, listen to this. Breaking news, the US Supreme Court has just issued one of the most horrific and dystopian rulings in history. The Supreme Court has ruled to gut a lifeline for prisoners who were wrongfully convicted. 
even when new evidence shows that they were innocent of the crime they were convicted of. Ruling 6-3, to three, the right-wing Supreme Court said that new evidence that was previously not admitted due to ineffective legal counsel cannot be used to exonerate anyone. This means that even if a prisoner or an inmate can prove that they were completely innocent and had no fault for their conviction, tough luck. And the theory used to uphold this barbaric ruling is the same theory used to uphold slavery, states' rights. Per Justice Thomas, states apparently have a right to execute people even when they are innocent. Since 1972, over 1,500 Americans have been executed and 187 of them were later exonerated. Disproportionately black and brown, 11% of all people America has executed were innocent the whole time. This is your pro-life Supreme Court. That is mental. That's crazy. I don't know what to say to that. No words. You just leave that one. David Mostak, no words. I don't want to dead no beef. This is the world we live in, people. Bad. Like, You're being bad? kind. No, I mean, is it bad? Like, is that a thing that's now... Like, they say it's a new, they say it's a new... A new law is if you commit a crime... And you're convicted, and tomorrow we find out yeah, you're innocent. America, though, you're staying in a particular state, yeah. But like, this is what I mean. America, do I love the country for the things that are a little bit bad? Of course. I love going to strip clubs. I love making money and doing all that stuff. But could I live there? Shock him, can't live there, man. No, I couldn't live there. I believe. There's a whole I conversation. I got family. I got bare family over there. So. I feel like America on a whole is suffering for the. The deaths in which that the Europeans done when they first went there. Mm. I thought that country is always going to be in problems because they it doesn't belong to them, so it's cursed. This is how I genuinely feel. So I can't live on a cursed land. It's a mad, mad thing. So I've got a screenshot of the last one. This is also a massive stinker for me. Massive stinker. A nine-person jury on Friday found Hollywood architect and Film Academy member Jeffrey Cooper guilty of three accounts of child. Now, this is all I'm going to say moving forward. People in Hollywood that are above the age of 50, stop touching under 16s. No, what is wrong with you lot, no, brothers? They're not listening to that. I you think. lot make me sick, cuz. Allow this. Just allow it. When I think about what happened to Will Smith, all he done now was slap someone and everyone's going mad. Because how many comes. more individuals in this behind the scenes that are not actors that we don't know that are here to make good films are going to come out for just touching kids, brother? It's, so, it's nuts, isn't it? It's three accounts, bro. And that's just what they've been found guilty for. That's what they've been found guilty for. It's all you older European weird dons. Yeah, it's nuts. You're always in weird positions like the Houses of Parliament working for the Conservative Party or whatever it was. You're just weird dons. I'm getting tired of telling these stories as well. Next week, my holidays are going to be a little bit nicer. But this week, I just want to show everyone how harsh the world is. It's horrible. It's disgusting, bruv. It's disgusting. It's I horrible. think You know what? When you put people in power, yeah, watch how they... Watch what happens. Mm. Watch what starts coming out I of them. I think there's so many people that are in these powerful positions that they're on what them are on, bro. Like they're on that weird shit. Like, what's that guy that had the island? What's his name again? Jeffrey Epstein. Bro, bro like, there's people club. that have made, like, fortunes off child these kind of things and i remember i've heard you say this before so my thing is like if if you're six obviously it's a bad thing to be successful in it but if you've been doing child for so long yeah then there must be other people you're doing it with there must be a lot of people yeah, doing it. You get it's a me? business isn't it exactly that's what i'm saying for that to be a business it's got to be a blueprint as well you've right. got to have customers you've got to yeah, have, yeah, yeah. have business partners. i'm thinking about it if you it's child me. that oh, i like saying it. I, Bruh, see it, bro. I know for a fact it's hidden it's not going to be in plain sight so who's helping you hide it right it's gonna have to be someone federal. It has to be someone in a corporate position. It can't be fucking Billy from around the corner. Billy from around the corner couldn't even stop the brothel in Tottenham closing down. Yeah. So I've got to keep this real, 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 real. When you have a position of hierarchy, there's two ways you can look at it. Responsibility or power. If you look at it as power, I will never talk to you. If you look at it as a responsibility, you understand you have a service in order to provide for people. Power, I don't want power. I like lots of responsibility though, whereas mm. other people like lots of power. I ain't here to dictate, but, I'm trying to here to cooperate. But then again, if you look at it as power though, power still and responsibility still go hand in hand though. 
unfortunately, you're fully right, but unfortunately, when you present it to an ignorant group of people, when people have power, so there's, there's sometimes like the egotistical come, thing comes out when okay. you think of power. I mean, I can make my man do that. Yeah, yeah. You see, when you have oh, responsibility, okay. it's like, what? I'm responsible for this. Yeah, I've got yeah. to take care of it. I so I want people to realise that in every position that you have, you are a part of something. Mm. You are not the something. Even though the engine's the most important part of the car at the front, you take something else out of the car, it's moving nowhere. Mm. So I just think this... Sorry to bring it on a downer, but I looked no, at all the no. howlers. They were all horrible people in great positions taking the piss. But John Terry, you're the biggest wanker of all. Well, you know... I want your daughter to bring home a nigger from the hood. Black and man. A, a, Black like a, man. I want it to be a man that comes in and out of prison. Yeah. I want him to. He's I want. A, I want him to wear Visu jeans. Yeah, for real. A I, I want him to wear T N S and a Visu jeans. Got a BLM tattoo. BLM tattoo <laughs> on his face. I like. I right want there. him to yeah. support the the tear tattoo is a B is a BLM tattoo. Like. Imagine that. I want him to support a team that just doesn't like Chelsea. I want him to be everything that you don't like, John Terry. Mm. So you can fully understand where we're coming from, a little he, bit. You know he's gonna cane his daughter as well. What? John Terry looks like a man that used to punch up his wife when Chelsea lost. Mm. John Terry looks like a man that on the weekend, going to the pub, getting drunk for five hours, just drinking beer, is a good night out. Mm. These are not the type of people I like. No. Do you know what, actually? I, I did have to go, but I do want to bring this up, actually. Fuck it. I'm, like, I'm still so baffed, yeah, that, like, to this day, we're just still seeing, like, fucking... Ameri like mass shootings over there. Brother, the one that happened the other day is Cuz, have you heard what they, s oh my God. That's what I'm saying, like, we were, we were talking about this on a podcast yesterday, yeah. And I didn't even know about it until my brethren brought it up, innit? But my thing is like, when he said it to me, I was so desensitized. Like I didn't even move, I didn't even flinch. And obviously it sounds wrong, innit? But it's like, I hear it happening all the time, school shootings, mass shootings in America. And it's like, like obviously you want to feel an like, emotional attachment to it. But at the same time, it's like, it happens all the time. Let me before poet go before poet goes um says Plays the saying, thing. Yeah, no. Like that's interesting what you say, yeah. When I went to um I'm taking it somewhere else, but I just want you to mm. just try to envision this very yeah. quickly, yeah. I was in Bahrain recently, I had a DJ book in there, and I met a man um like on a day off I was I was at a house party or whatever and I spoke to I was just chatting to this guy. He's telling me right, he's been in Bahrain for X amount of years or whatnot. Mm. But he lived in Saudi Arabia for quite a while, yeah? And then he was in Saudi Arabia around the time that the 9-11 thing was going on. Okay. Now, the reason why we started having this conversation was because somehow we started talking about war, yeah? And he was saying to me, he's from England, by the way, but he was saying that, like, people actually don't have a proper concept in England of, like, what that really, really looks like 100%. and the level of anxiety that that causes, yeah? So anyway... He's in Saudi Arabia. He's come back to England quickly, but he's come back because he needed to. He was, he's working there. He's like he does the line of work that he does is mad. Like he contributes to like building palaces and all this type of stuff. Anyway, cut long Lit. story short, yeah. He's telling me that he's um, when he's got to his apartment block, there's bare soldiers and that with straps on whatever, yeah. But he needs to get in his apartment, but he needs the card out of his car first. But they were the soldiers were around where his car was, so he's trying to tell them. I need to get my card from the car so I can get into my apartment. Also, the card is for, it, it acts as like ID. So you can show them, uh, this is why I'm here. So he didn't have it, yeah? Okay. These men put the strap in his face. They put him on the floor, put the strap in his face and he was on the floor and they had the gun to his head like that, yeah? Now, when someone just said something like that, you think, oh, right, that must be crazy or whatnot, yeah? Do you know how mad it is when you're in a building? Say like a building like this and you know that there's three men outside that want to punch you up. Mm. You see like that little like, level of anxiety is a bit mad because you don't know what these men have got and what not. Do you know what it must be like to be on the floor and a man has a strap to your head and you know that in this moment, life you means nothing. Really now take that. These children are in school and they're just learning. And there's a teach. Could you um like I can't even fav I can't even begin to imagine or even fathom the anxiety of knowing that somewhere in this building there's a man with an AR-15. Do you know how big? Hey. Do you know how nuts that is to come there and start shooting up youths? Did you see the um the other day the other mass shooting with the, the one um, that drove six hours and, and then went to the, a black neighborhood? And then every time he saw a white person, he goes, "Oh, sorry." Yeah, so he had um basically he was filming it like Call of Duty. 
This white Don, yeah, he was like, he was, there was some Don, I don't know where he lived or whatever. I don't know what his motivation was or whatever it was, yeah. But like, he had um, a camera on the top of his head. So yeah. he's filming it like a, you know, like POV. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, he's driven six hours. He's gone to like a neighborhood which is like predominantly yeah, black. black people or whatever. You can see it, see it all. He's driving in the car. He's got the strap. He's got on the the um, the, the uh, back of the firearm or on the nose of the firearm. It says nigger. Mm. He's um oh he's God. like come out and straight away as soon as he comes out. Yeah, it's literally like a game. When I first saw it, I thought it was a game because I watched this not really knowing what, what like What's going I just on? saw. Yeah, I'm just seeing a man come out. Bam. He starts shooting people and whatnot. I'm like, I'm just thinking, wow, this looks mad real. Like, this looks mad real. Then I've realised, oh, no, this is real. He's gone in the shopping centre and he's just shooting up everyone. Yeah. And as Poet said, he's like, there's a white don that's on the floor and he shoots him, but he's like, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Then he comes back and he just starts shooting everyone and whatnot, yeah? Like, the, the level of anxiety in that is just mad to just know that even being in there and you're hearing these gunshots and whatnot, these things only happen in America. Only. When you look at the mass shooting stats here, it's, it's like there's one in Brazil, there's one here, there's two there, there's five here, there's zero here, there's zero there. These lot, when I checked it, it was like 288. This year alone? Yeah, this year alone or like in a, in a short space of time. 2022. Yeah. Do you know it's so funny because just it's so funny. I was speaking to a guy today yeah, about racism, and he was like, "Oh, I don't think it's right for a black person to walk up to a, a white person and be racial, be racist, and vice versa." And I was like, "I agree, but if I saw a black person being racist to a white person, I probably wouldn't say anything. But if I saw the other way around, I'd probably say, intervene." Mm. And he goes, "Oh, but you think you're sending the wrong message?" And I'm like, "I don't think I am." I said, "This is the message I'm sending. You see, the police when they're they're not gonna arrest you if you're just a drug dealer. They will look at the operation and go, what's the foundation of this problem? And they will go and get the kingpin. So then that way, they don't even care about the 15 youths that are working for him. They've got the main guy now and you're all gone. Mm -hmm. There's not enough being done from any one country that fucked up our countries in the first place to eradicate the foundation of the problem. So if you're not eradicating the foundation of the problem, the problem is gonna continue to exist mm -hmm. and it's gonna be coming back in different formats at all times. So until countries like America accept that the Native Americans were the first people there and make it known the Native Americans were the first people there and start teaching the real history and about what the Europeans done. And until this country says, you know what, Queen, these are stolen jewels, you know, we need to give them back. See the Commonwealth Games or the Commonwealth stuff, let's get rid of it. Until we start telling the truth, all that's going to happen is you're going to have young black people being misled finding that information later on and getting mad angry. So when they hear about mass shootings in America, bro, you can't expect them to have, I'm not saying it's yeah, right yeah. or wrong, but you can't expect for them to have any sympathy for anything that white people go through because of the problems of the past that the Europeans have created, there's problems for our black people everywhere, Chucky. Yeah, yeah. You're not even safe in your own home in Africa. Yeah, but the mass the mass shooting thing is not that's not just a, a white on black. No, thing. but that a is, lot of that those, is like no, but we're talking about that one that just that's happened that, right yeah, now, the black one. one. Yeah. That one was yeah. literally a guy driving six hours putting nigger on his strap. That's that is so, that's bro. crazy. Like, I can't even like, that's there's nothing crazy, I can do to even think about what would have possibly gone through his mind to even f do that. Well, do you know what the other thing is with this year, where, where it's so deep? Yeah, is that cause this happened in Texas? Yeah, now. Like and bearing in it mind, in, in Texas, a, yeah, Google that oh, just, just to one? make sure. Yeah, that's the racist Buffalo, part. the Buffalo South, NY, the 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 the, 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 lot, the most recent yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The school shooting happened in the, Texas. The school, yeah, I'm talking about the school shooting. Oh, the school. oh, oh yeah, yeah, the school yeah, one. Yeah. Oh, okay. What do you know? What we could say wherever they're from, wherever they're from, but just Google that anyway. Yeah. Okay. But what I like, what I was listening to, because one thing that I've been trying to do, yeah, and mm. I always do this anyway, mm. yeah, is that like. When there is an argument, when it comes to, let's say, for example, like gun control, yeah? Yeah. I always try to, like, hear the other side of... Because I'm, I'm anti it. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it, personally, me. What, but what I try to do is... Anti-gun law? Huh? You're anti -gun I'm anti-gun. Anti oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But what I try to do is, I try to hear the other... I try to hear, like, a plausible argument for why it is justifiable to have an AR-15. And I'm genuinely trying to find it. I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to um, do it to like have a rebuttal or whatever. I just want to hear like, what is like what is the plausible argument? I cannot find one. I can't find one. But what I, one thing that I came across here is that they were saying that 
there's like f- something like 50 senators or something like that, yeah, who have the power to overrule the type of guns that people can have, okay, yeah, yeah, right? But they don't want to change that. They don't want to change that. For whatever reason, you they don't, don't want to change, change that. Change it, A lot of it has... Nah, but they could change it if they want to. But understand this, yeah? This is just my analogy on it, yeah? Okay. Is that the majority... They could be, uh, like... We could say, like, 90% or 80% of Americans could say we want gun control. Doesn't mean they want their guns taken away from them. But they might all... A lot of them, the majority might say, look, like... There's no reason for everyone to be or people to be able to buy an AR-15. No, like you should be no, able to, if anything, have your little pistol, protect your yard. Boom, 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 boom. A lot of them may say that. Yeah, that could be the majority. But you see, the the one percent that are the hella wealthy mm. and that control things. Yeah, mm. if one don who is controlling all of this has the ability to be able to change that, mm. understand the power in that phone call when that one percent rings you and says to you, listen, you don't need to change that. Huh. Don't change that. I'll tell you what, huh. is that what you're gonna, you wanna change that? What's the name of your charity? I'll give it some money. Yeah, I'll give you, what, I'll put a young two million in your charity. Just, you know what I mean? That is the power that that 1%, that person in that 1% can do. So essentially, what I'm saying is, is that the majority who are not in that 1% of wealth and don't have that level of power, they can't call a shot like that. All they can do is just grieve. The reality is that with these lot who's in the 1%, they're never the victims. Mm -hmm. So they don't have that feeling of, oh my God, my son or my daughter's just being... Mm -hmm. They, in their mind, they just see it as an unfortunate circumstance. It just just is what it is. Also, as well, yeah, I was watching the next thing where the news reporter was asking him, like, what do you think about gun control? Mm. And the Don said, who I've is like some a, political I've Don. I've got a message right here, you know. I've got oh, a video. no, it was a video. Yeah, I've got a video. Oh, is it? Where he says, um, right he says something about um, you're always politicising it. It's, it's easy to go with politics. With the... Right. Do you want to play it? Right Have you got it? Of course. All right, I'll play it. There are 19 sets of parents who, who are never going to get to kiss their child goodnight. Is this the moment to reform gun laws? You know, it's it's easy to go to politics. It's important. It's at the heart of the issue. I I get that that's where the media likes to go. It's not. It's where many of the people we've talked to here like to go. The proposals from Democrats and the media, inevitably, when some violent psychopath murders people... A violent psychopath who's able to get a weapon so easily. 18-year-old with two... AR-15. If you want to stop violent crime, the proposals the Democrats have, none of them would have stopped this. But why does this only happen in your country? I really think that's what many people around the world just, they cannot fathom. Why only in America? Why is this American exceptionalism so awful? You know, I'm sorry you think American exceptionalism is awful. I think this aspect, I think this aspect of it. You get your political agenda. No, it's God, honestly, God love you. Senator, it's not. I just want to understand why you do not... Craig David, stop that there. Stop that there. You know what that guy did, yeah? He found a loophole to escape the conversation. Yep. That's what he did. Because he that was a t- he didn't know how to answer the first question. And you know what the reality is? And I've said this before, yeah? And this might be difficult for some people to deep. But the reality is, you see, in this life that we live, yeah? regardless of whether people like to admit this or not, or whether they want to feel like they're a part of it or not, everything that we do has a political element to it. There's politics to everything. Mm -hmm. You can't turn around and say that a Don who's got, who can go to the shop, that is a political thing. That is Someone made a political decision to say, you know what, these are for sale. That is a political thing. Someone can't come around to you and tell you that, oh, you're just going to politics. That is a political element. Mm-hmm. To be able to overturn that is a political element. Mm-hmm. Even the mental health of some people or whatnot. There's political elements to stuff like okay. that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So for him to do that, then that's another thing. Like they always do that, innit? It's like, oh, well, you know, it's easy to go to politics. It is politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, you know, you said there's politics and everything, yeah? There's also a business and everything as well. Facts. So what I mm-hmm. need to remember is like, these men might be reluctant to change the law because they're they profiting off bread, it. Yeah. Profit Simple as that, because where are the guns coming from, bro? How are exactly. the guns getting into the country? Put That's why I said to the start. Remember when I said to you, 
some people look at that position and it's a position of responsibility. Mm. If you look at it as responsibility, like I have the oldest in my household mm. out of the brothers, I've got to look after my brothers and sister. That's my responsibility. Mm. If I looked at it as a position of power, I would exploit it. You go and do this for me. Yeah, you go do that for me. I used to do whatever my brothers and sisters said. I'd do everything for them because I was the oldest one. Mm. In that right there, you're looking at a man that probably in school got bullied, wasn't the guy, and now he's got a position of power where he can sort of live through his probably childhood dreams. Yeah, look yeah. at him. I want to get a gun. Oh, I'm not doing it. He's making money now. It's just... It's absolute trash, bro. Do you know what I think as well? I blame John Terry, though. <laughs> <laughs> and Wes Nelson. And Wes Nelson. <laughs> but do you know what I think as well, yeah? Is that, like, even... I reckon, yeah, that a large percentage of Americans, yeah, they, without even realise it, walk around with mad anxiety, you know? Like, because... Think about it. In any moment, Ooh, you could just get, get shot. Get in the face. What? And you know what they do? That's I think we talked about this last guys. time. We talked about this last time, yeah? You know, like, they're... The sign of when you know a man is dying to shoot you is when he says this. Can you step off my property, please? Oh. When the guy fam, went to the house for fam, that tick blood. Fam, you see when a man says, can you step off my property, please? You know what he's saying? Oh, stay on it. Yeah, he's saying, stay on saying, it. Because I bought this chest. thing and I know what I've got. I know what I've got. I know what I've got. Stay on it. Mm. Did you see the... Sorry, poet. Did you see the one where the fucking... The Don, I think he came, what was it? He came, there was a situation with his girl or some shit he like that, come to the yard. The daughter. And then he's the man to the said, oh, can you get off my property, please? Can you get off my property, please? Calmly he's saying, can you get off my property? Mm. He goes into the yard, gets the biggest one <laughs> the and shoots the Don to death, bro. What? Like, for, yes, bro. Killed him in front of everything. Killed him in front of his daughter. He thought he was going to shoot him to life. Of course, it's death. No, but, that's not the- <laughs> no, but no, but we're talking about a different thing. I know. Yeah, I'm talking about a different one. I'm talking about <laughs> with a whip. With a whip, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I forget the truth. The light is bare funny, cause right now. <laughs> you thought you were gonna shoot him to life? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sex, bro. Well, get to the truth now, though. No, I meant the one where the guy come with the whip, the little white boy, like the Milky Bar kid. He comes to the yard with the whip, and then um, when the dad went back to say, "Yo, why is your you coming to my yard with a whip after whipping my daughter?" Mm-hmm. The man said, "Can you sell my property?" He come with a strap, so mm-hmm. the son's got the whip and he's got the strap. Mm-hmm. That is a slave trade household. But also, you need to remember, like, because gun laws have been a thing in America for so long, yeah, it's just part of them, you feel me? It's just, like, like I was having this conversation with Eska on a podcast yesterday. It's like, bro, it's like, obviously, it might not be the same, but it's seen, see the same way I have my phone everywhere with me. Mm. That might be the same way they treat their gun, bro. The same way everyone, a lot of people have cars, a lot of people have this and that. that mm. ha- that's how they treat guns in America. So, obviously, they're there to kill. But at the same time, bro, it's like, it's so implemented into their life that it's like, a, a lot of them couldn't imagine a life without a gun no. being legal, you get me? Because right. even my older brother lived in America, yeah. But he literally got killed in America. He got shot. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, this was like 2017, 18. And it was like, when when I read about the oh. whole case, yeah, the way the guy killed him was just so like, you, because when you're taking someone's life, yeah, you need to deep, like, that's the person got a family, whatever, whatever. But it's like, he just killed him so really nearly, like, like he'd done it before, you get yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's weird to me, like, in America, they've got such a low value of life. You feel me? Like, I remember being at Twitter space with an American, yeah, and he's like, He's showing off his gun. He literally said, oh, look, guys, you're in the UK, I've got a gun. And he's he's putting his mic to the gun and he's shooting it in the air like that. And it's like, bro, like, these lot have no sense of, like, value. They don't value life at all. They literally, like, the quality of life over there is so low compared to what we're used to, like. And that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I, I can't relate to their mindset. I can't relate to how they've been brought up. And that's why it's a thing where, like, I don't think I could ever, like, live there or even try and, like, involve myself what's going on over there. But I've got family over there, though, I can't lie. I got. I had a, I had a debate with someone about that shit as well because the man was telling me, "Rah, you know, if two men have got straps, you're less likely to get into an altercation." And I said, "Brother, huh? I couldn't believe what he was telling me." I'm saying to him, "Listen, he said, oh, he was saying you're you're more likely to have a." Fi-. He said to me, "Yeah, if you got if everyone's got straps, you're it's, you're more likely to be able to organize a fist fight." I said, "Big man." I said, let me tell you something about the petty huh? side of let me, I said, let me tell you something about the petty side of me. I'm not saying that I would do this, mm-hmm. but this is just a thought that is in no, my no, head. Say. If I have a strap and you have a strap mm-hmm. and we have a oh, and we've got a situation now, and the man says, Alright, cool, you know what? Put them down, let's have a square dance. You're, cool, oh. you know what? I'm gonna put my thing down and then we're gonna have a fight. Yeah. But I better win this. Mm. Oh, because let me tell you something. If, if you me. punch me up in front of my gal and whatnot, yeah. I'm coming back and I'm blowing your house up. Facts. 
It's as simple as that. With your, with your family. Do you know what I would say? And do you know how much people that feel, feel that way? Mm, 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 do you know how much money in my ends wouldn't eat? They would, they would uh, have a fist fight. They would laugh. So why, why, well, why have I got my strap? Why? I, I bring my son to school to take him back home. That's We're what not saying. even going to school nah, now. Bro, if I've got a burner on me, I'm not fighting. I'm, I'm never fighting. Fam, if I've got it on me, I can't fist fight, bro. I've you got can't... it on me. Yes, exactly. Yeah, if they're not going to shoot, fighting for. they'll gun I got, And I've got hella sweets. Oh. No them ones. What? Yeah. I pull up Bare with a teeth. Man said I came with extra teeth. Right, exactly. No them ones. Obviously, if you're on a budget, you'll fight. Because bullets, I hear it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're on a budget, I'll just learn how to just let off the one sweet. Get me. Papa, my teeth shot. I said one pop. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. I'll be the don that it takes. You know, like, there's bare things going on and whatnot. And the man's on... You know, like they're just holding the thing or whatnot. They're busting off theirs, but I'm not busting mine. Yo, wait for, waiting for the perfect angle, wait for that. Once but I get the one, one popping. Bye! <laughs> yeah, that's me now. What are you talking about? Well, Chucky speaking yeah? experience, I like. Nah, nah, nah. But I see, I see the footwork, bro. You've done that before. And that man's so comfortable with it. I like. Oh, blow up his house. Like, oh, oh Chucky. Fuck. <laughs> 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 now I'm no, thinking about, it's mad, you know. The gun knows are actually mad, bro. It's crazy, man. For them, for them, it's so ne- for them. It is like their culture. Like it's so that's important for them. That's all they know. They can't, like, yeah, they can't. And like that's this is another this is another reason why it's politics because you see when there's like a new person that is running for president, that is part of the conversation. Ooh. These lot want to know what are you doing about the gun laws? Mm. What are you doing about it? Because if you're doing something about it, if you're going to try and overturn it or whatever, we're going to touch the road and we're going to cause a madness. Mm. And you know what that looks like. If you've got bear man coming outside saying we're not getting rid of our guns and they come outside with all their straps, then, you know, what kind of fucking protest is that going to look like? That's mm. going to end up mad bloody. It was, so, it was right, innit? It's just because of money, man. It's Imagine how much money you make it's, of it's guns. business and politics, bro. Business and politics, bro. Red, bro. And then you can send some guns over to Ukraine. Exactly. Can't you? Exactly. Honestly, honestly. And then you can get some, because you're right. Where do they come from? They have to come from somewhere. There's deals that are being done. Like there's a, there's a deal that's being done for a shipment that's coming in. Where are these go? Where are they going? Exactly. It's the same with, it's the same with Coke, bro. But how are these guys out here killing? Akala said it best. Fam, they're out here killing dons, legally, as they would call it, and still praising God. Mm. Yeah. This is a mad thing. You know, God sees everything, you lot. God, this is everything. <laughs> what is the... He's really the man God, that made the Truman Show. And seek from God, bro. You can't play hide and seek okay. from God. He's like Zordon in Power Rangers. What amendment is? It? It's the sec, <laughs> bro. It's the second <laughs> amendment. What's the second amendment? So they Americans have amendments. Yeah, their first. Wait, let me just go. For I just it. want to know the second one. And it's about guns. Yes, it's the right to bear arms. Do you know why though? That's how they took the country in the first place. <laughs> Facts. Let me just Google this. That's exactly That's what it is, isn't it? Because Akala said the best. Even what you said, yeah, about Coke. Like, I remember Akala, he had a skit on one of Nine's album, yeah. yeah. Do you remember that I Wonder tune? I Wonder with Nine. Yeah, yeah. Akala yeah. had a skit, yeah, and he's talking about, like, bro, like, like, there's millions, hundreds of millions of pounds being made through drugs, illegal drugs, every single year. And yeah. he said, like, do you think that's being made in Halsden or Tottenham or right. this? No, he said that's being made in, in bigger, bigger places. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, that's that's the responsibility of big people in high, higher up places. You feel me? So it's like, man. He said war is profitable. Exactly, war is profitable. Profitable, but yeah. Everything is backwards, man. All right, so where's the Ninth Amendment, actually? I'm gonna go and watch animal videos on YouTube. Have you watched, um, what is that documentary that was on Netflix again? Um, it was about, was it the Ninth Amendment or some shit like that? It was a Nine deep one. It was about the, like, how they still enslave people with prison. the je- with prison. Have you I, seen, I that? seen that? Brother, it's, it's cold. The Twelfth Amendment. Amendment. All right, so poet, yeah. So the, Ameri- the Americans have amendments, yeah. The First Amendment is um, the right to protest. It's the freedom of religion, freedom of speech. Their Second Amendment is the right to bear arms. What the hell? Second. The second. second. So after religion, it's after guns. Religion, after religion, so after, after protest, protest, guns. Yeah. Master, you can say what you want to say, but I have the right to bust. The third restricts... So after God, it's guns. The third restricts quartering of crazy. soldiers in private after homes. After the Bible is burners, bro. Bible and burners. That is a great Bible. The fourth the amendment the prohibits unreasonable searches and seizures. Right to free speech. Um, okay. I say what I want to say. And the second amendment, I can have, have a gun. I have the right to bust you. That's crazy. Raw man. The sixth, yeah. So after even the after the you? even oh, after wow, the straps, wow, wow. this is mad, bro. Their amendments are mad. Just, the sixth amendment pro- mad. protects the right to public um, to speedy public trial by jury. Bro, Go on. It, 
I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, but bro, after like this is all after straps. That's crazy. It's nuts, bro. You want to boss Billy? It's a part of their life. Huh? It's a part. It's bro. It's a part of their life, bro. Like I said, the same oh, thing with driving cars, having a phone, but having a burner. What walk of a burner is normal to them, bro. That yeah. is so sad. Is, uh, At least in like, like in like in in, what in London, you know who's got the burners. Exactly. Everyone's got the burners in America. Everyone. Everyone. Again, it's the curse, man. That's why it's nothing. They're cursed. Right. America's that's a why, curse. That's why nothing makes sense. America's so, so fucked. Curse. They're so crazy. All the people that make money give it back to the country. Like, no one makes money. Like, Kanye West is the smartest. I'll buy the land. Yeah. Everyone yeah. else will just buy stuff. America, and you're literally just making all this money to give it right back. Yeah. To who? Yeah. What's wrong with you, lot, man? Buy land. It's systematic slavery, man. Hey, Billy, you were sick. Oh, come on, man. Thank you, you for coming on, bro. you got to come back way Hey, right, shout out to the no, pod. 100%. Shout out your pod. Shout out everybody. Oh, yeah, please. M1 Podcast. Make sure you got one on M1 Podcast myself. Billy the Goat, yeah, Mods, yeah. SK. I got, a lot, I got a lot of big things coming soon. You get me? So make sure you follow me. Check it out. You get me? Yeah, yeah. 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 You're, you're coming. You are officially a friend of the show. Nah, come I'm so glad Lippy put me on. I'm here when you need me, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out Lippy for putting me on. Thank you, Lippy. Yeah, shout out to my nigga Lick Shop. That's my dog. Is there anything anyone needs to know about other than that? Uh, Filthy are dropping something very, very, very soon. Head over to Is there a the song? Filthy. Is there a. I see a little trailer, but I was like, You saw the trailer. Felt, yeah, felt... you see the trailer. Don't worry, you'll get, you'll get something soon. So will you, Chucky. 100%. Even yeah, really. you, East Africa. I love you. Everyone's going to get something very, very soon. So watch out for Filthy. Stay tuned on the channels. Um, oh, you don't need to check out the M1 podcast, man. I'm sorry. But have... Yeah. I'm man. sorry, but I need to give myself my flowers. Yeah. What is it? Why not? Why not? Why the latest pod in the streets right now. Strong, that's that's yeah. facts, bro. Facts. If, you might have seen us on TikTok, innit? Talk. Strong. But yeah, right. Shit. YouTube, YouTube or Keep going. Yeah. Watch it from start to finish, man. Yeah. Instagram. You get me. We're represented. Yeah, yeah. Instagram everywhere. Big and you're funny on Twitter. Of course, man. Billy Who's your boys? Shout out to boys. Your Modern boys. SK. I said it already. Come We're represent, on. Man. Represent Big the younger generation. Big them up. What's their socials? Representing them. Is mods with an S after the Z and then SK. I can't, SK is hard to find still. You find it. You find it. You find it. Come M1, you it's can a, see everything. You get me. But now, man, we're representing the younger generation. Obviously, I'm only 18, innit? So it's mm. a thing where it's like, when man came into this thing, I thought, nah, man, people my age are misrepresented. You feel right. me? Obviously, man, love watching you lot's thing and rare tear but. You man are like 50, bro. Like, man, I need, <laughs> need people. I need people my age from my era. You get me? Like, a poet was my age during the end of the era, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you get me? I was, a, I, was, I was even born, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was even born, bro. But yeah, like, I need to represent, I need to represent where I'm from as well. Manchester, out of bro. London. So yeah. There's not enough creatives out of London doing their thing, so I'm no. gonna have to pave the way, you feel me? No. So yeah, man. But I appreciate yeah. you love having me on there, man. Big man too. Good guy, man. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah, man. Bless him, man. Respect for coming. Chucky, what was you, come on. What should we check out? Um, do you know what? Benjart.com. Benja, like Benjart.com. Yeah? The purple one Benjart, right here. that's where we're the at now. Check out yeah, so you me. already know, you can get this one there and that as well. You also, actually, it. if anyone's listening, can anyone get me tickets for Clear Soul? I need tickets for 50 oh, cent. I need tickets for 50 cent. <laughs> I'll try, man. I'll try a thing. Can anyone get me tickets for Clear Soul? I'll, I'll try a thing. I'll pay? Because she's amazing. Brother, I just came late and I thought, I, I've got this arrogance sometimes, I'll get them. You know, I didn't know. I, I honestly did not know that was gonna sell that for Kiva. Blood. Some of the best music in the last two years. She's Brother, cold. she's on a mad thing. Yeah, she's cold. So if I can get a ticket, is she better than? I'll try a thing. Is she better than? John Terry, much better. Is she better than? Go on, don't say it. Who? Where's Nelson? <laughs> Fuck, goodbye, everyone. <laughs> That's a techie one still. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah. Alright.